information from the previous video. Um, okay, so um, here's a really great example of analogy in comic books. Um, Stan Lee um, is the creator of uh, Marvel Comics. Um, used the fight during civil rights as his analogy, right? So his characters weren't all powerful. They felt pain, anguish, regret. They won sometimes, they lost other times. And all of them were based on civil rights struggle of the 1960s. And that is why they are relatable to so many people today who are still struggling with civil rights. So his characters were often demonized by the public as the terrifying other, right? Um, he drove home messages of tolerance and acceptance while rejecting demonization and bullying. Those stories have room for everyone, regardless of their race, gender, religion, or color of their skin, Lee said in 2017 in a video published by Marvel. The only things we don't have room for are hatred, tolerance, and bigotry. And so the greatest manifestation of that idea was the X-Men. Um, he introduced them initially in 1963, and they were a team of teenage mutants who were led by their teacher and mentor, uh, Professor Charles Xavier. And they, they fought against super criminals and other mutants, right, who were bent on the destruction of humanity. Um, but rather than be a black and white battle between good and evil, the X-Men actually had a wrinkle. The mutants were hated by the normal humans they defended, right? So you see his analogy come to play. And what he helped do is get people to understand the struggle for those during the civil rights movement and beyond, right? So the struggle for those who are minorities on race, on um, disability, on um, socioeconomic background, uh, sexual orientation. And while women are not officially a minority, um, women are still treated um, in this country in many ways as if uh, part of a minority group. So women are, uh, discrimination against women is, is put into this uh, category and what he fought for. And we now have many laws on the books today as a result of him fighting for rights of minorities. And so that's what a very, very powerful thing about Stan Lee, amazing human being, help transform the way people looked at and understood and saw the struggle for equality and equal rights, regardless of gender, sex, everything else, right? Um, so Marvel today, right, Stan unfortunately died, um, and today Marvel still uses its characters to comment on wider society and contemporary issues. In fact, the current Civil War II storyline is being seen as many as sort of a meta-commentary on police brutality and racial profiling, which is something that's very timely now and, and, and very, very, very current. Um, And so um, those are obviously m current characters in the Marvel storyline that are people of, of shades of brown and uh, gender, different genders. And yeah, actually, I guess he's Hulk's green, right? Who are, who are different and who are still fighting the battle for equality. Okay, so if you're having a hard time finding a good analogy, you can actually make one up. It's really a difficult thing to do, and I, I recommend initially when you're doing it to try to start with known analogies um, because it's hard. Um, but here's here's some, some steps that you can take uh, to make it easier. One is to ga gather examples 
Another one is this says pick fertile ground. And that just basically means kind of like with the, the, the previous um, slide, the current topic of police brutality, right? That's fertile ground. That's going on right now. We're living, we're living that. People are aware of that. It's in the news. People are in the streets living it. They're experiencing it. That, that's what fertile ground means. And then compare and contrast. If your goal with your story is to reach someone who doesn't understand, you need to meet them on their level by comparing to something they do understand, but also contrasting with what they don't. Okay, so gathering examples. Examples are um, easier than making analogies from scratch. Sometimes the analogy itself becomes the example. And if you desire a more creative hook, then it becomes sort of this gateway to imaginative understandings. Okay, for instance, the Joker. Um, the Joker is the dark side of humanity that most of us don't acknowledge. The part that you know doesn't want to obey the little rules of society the person who wants to say the things that a lot of us think but don't say out loud. He represents the idea that we all in some way wish we could be a part of, but also know that it's better not to. <laughs> um, he doesn't obey society's rules. He doesn't follow a set way of thinking. And depending on whose joker, whose story of the, the Batman series, um, because there are many of them out there, depending on whose Joker you're looking at, he's sometimes a villain. And lately, it, Joaquin Phoenix made him a very sympathetic character represented by the misunderstandings of mental illness. And I know there is both um, applause for him doing that and criticism for him doing that because um, most people with mental illness are actually victims of crime and not perpetrators. Um, so the Joker has taken on many different interpretations over the years. However, in general, he becomes the antithesis to Batman. That's, that's the analogy, right? So the analogy is a hero without an evil counterpart is like a day without the night. He becomes the night to Batman's day. And therein is the analogy of the Joker. And we then use that to develop the character. Okay. So a hero without an evil counterpart is like a day without the night. That's the analogy. It's an analogy of opposites. Since Batman is kind, then the Joker must be cruel. Since Batman is handsome, the Joker must be ugly. Since Batman is loved, the Joker must be hated. And that's how the analogy of opposites works for us. Batman is philanthropic, therefore the Joker is a thief, right? Um, sort of the whole Robin Hood and reverse Robin Hood thing. Batman is envied, therefore the Joker is envious. And Batman, Batman is popular, therefore the Joker is unpopular. And that's, that's pretty much how that is developed and evolved, right? Let's look at another analogy here. Wonder Woman. So she has a lasso and whenever she lassos them, they have to um, obey her commands, right? So she has the ability to um, capture and dominate, which is also an opposite because women are often seen as the weaker sex. Um, and so the analogy becomes submission is like polio. Most Westerners associate it with earlier darker times in human history. Its eradication is a sign of human progress. Yet despite these perceptions, submission like polio has not in fact been eradicated. So that is the analogy that is behind the Wonder Woman character, right? So it's analogy of irony. Women are historically viewed as weak, passive, and submissive. Therefore, Wonder Woman is strong, assertive, and dominant. Um, the golden lasso is the symbol of her capture and she is equal to male superhuman, su superhero, <laughs> sorry, superheroes while still being feminine and attractive and dressed a little sexy slutty, however you want to call that, um, which 
is an irony in and of itself. Okay. Uh, Master Chief from Halo. He might seem like a typical soldier that has no face or personality, but um, he actually does have a backstory. He was kidnapped when he was a child and forced to become a warrior or soldier. Um, children were experimented on in order to create super soldiers. So throughout his childhood, he ended up becoming brainwashed to serve the uh, military. And his instinct to protect and lead over fought uh, against necessarily just being a soldier in the sense that he was supposed to follow orders and he became a warrior who wanted to do more than follow orders he wanted to, to become a leader so he is an iconic character known for kicking alien butt however there's a much darker side of him behind the visor okay and this is all what um the the creator of the character said about him so like others, you were strong, swift, and brave, a natural leader, but you had something they didn't, something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck. Was I wrong? So here we see luck is the analogy, right? Luck is the symbolism used for the analogy to develop the character. Luck is represented by the color gold, his visor's gold. Luck is represented by special abilities and powers that no one else has. Luck is a byproduct of a winning attitude. And then luck is something people wish for when they are desperate, in this case, attacked by aliens. So you'll see the color gold surrounding Master Chief. Okay, so we are going to stop this video here and continue in the next.